Okay guys, in this uh, segment of the video we're going to talk about chemical potential energy and how as you run a chemical reaction uh, there is a changeover in potential energy in that system and how that affects stability of our process. Uh, so first thing, take a look at our slide here. Um, when we're dealing with energy, um, energy is always stored inside the structure of those chemical bonds. So if you have H2O or C2H6 or whatever those chemical structures are, those actual bonds that are there are storing potential energy and there's potential energy available inside of those bonds that we can use. Now to break those bonds we always have to put energy in. Okay, So there's always some sort of activation energy or energy to get the process started. Okay, um, Once you start to break those bonds however, those bonds will rearrange themselves and they will make new compounds. When they start to make new compounds, those new compounds will have a different amount of potential energy stored in those bonds. So if you can imagine, you have a certain amount of potential energy, and then you break a bonds, you kind of mix everything up, and then when you make new stuff, you have a different amount of potential energy. And the comparison between those starting energies and ending energies kind of tells us how that reaction proceeds. Is it exothermic or endothermic? Does it become more stable or less stable? Okay. Uh, now the key thing is, when you're looking at that, the natural tendency of our universe is to go towards stability, which means lower energy. So in most cases, things like to be exothermic when they chemically react because they like to release extra kinetic energy so they can have a lower potential energy state in their products. Okay? So if we take a look at our first uh, energy diagram that helps diagram this process out, we will see here we have our potential energy, and then we have the energy of our reactants here. So in this case, it's hydrogen and oxygen. And then we have the energy of our products over here, which is water. This little bit of energy curve that goes up here, this EA, that's the energy of activation, or the energy it takes to start the reaction to happen. Okay? Um, what happens in this process is we need to activate the reaction. It runs. And then when the reaction runs, converts from hydrogen and oxygen to water, we get a net energy change that's negative. Okay? So this energy was here. We moved down to this energy state. So we have a negative change in energy. When you have a negative change in energy, that means you've released energy. So when you release energy, you're releasing that as kinetic energy that can go into the surroundings. Um, to, and that kinetic energy then can be used to warm things up. Okay? So remember, kinetic energy and temperature are linked to each other, where potential energy is energy stored inside these bonds. So if we're releasing a whole bunch of energy, and it's being used to warm up the surroundings, what do we have? Endothermic or exothermic? Well, we see a negative sign. We know that it's releasing energy and it's warming things up. So all those three, those things should lead us towards this is an exothermic process. In addition, this process would increase our stability because we now have a lower energy state than we started with, so we're a more stable configuration than we had before. If we flip the scenario and we start with our process of energy of reactants being here, going to our products. So notice how we have a double-headed arrow. So if we flip this, where we take water now and we make it turn back into hydrogen and oxygen, which um, we can do through a process called electrolysis of water. We actually can run electricity through water to make this happen. So if we're constantly putting electricity into the water, we're constantly feeding it energy, we can activate the energy, and then it's going to release some of that energy back when it forms your new products. But because the hydrogen and oxygen are higher energy than the water used to be, our net energy change now is positive. So we aren't able to release kinetic energy, we're actually able, we actually are required to pull kinetic energy into this, convert it into potential energy to make this happen. So as we pull energy from our surroundings, we cool down those surroundings, we now have the energy here, we're higher energy than we were before, we're positive, so we have an endothermic process. Okay, and this would be a less stable configuration than the previous. So this process is less preferred naturally because you end up being more, more energy, which is less stable. Now what that does, that leads us into this idea of thermochemical equations or how do the chemical reactions work in terms of energy. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here and then do another segment on the thermochemical equations. Thank you.